It's been more than a year since my last Yonex Barman & Shoe video, so I'll be comparing two of Yonex's current generation shoes, the 65Z and the Eclipsion Z, especially since we're in 2024 now and there's a major update on this generation of Eclipsion Z. I'll also be releasing a video comparing two of the current lightest Barman & Shoes on the market between Yonex and Leaning, so I'll be looking at the Yonex Aerus Z and the Leaning JF01, which actually has been worn by Anthony Ginting and Jonathan Christie, so make sure you subscribe to find out when they're published. In terms of Barman & Shoes, Yonex have quite a few series of Barman & Shoes in the international market which cater to a wide range of Barman & Players. There's the Infinity series with the Boa Dials, the Comfort series which focuses on comfort, yes. Yonex's own standard bearer of Barman & Shoe, the 65 series, the Superlight Aeros series, the Eclipsion series which has been an absolute tank of Barman & Shoe and ultimately the newer series of them all, the Cascade Drive series. In terms of naming, Yonex tends to have a Z behind the shoe series pointing it as their highest end shoe for that series before dropping down to X for a more budget friendly equivalent. You can see how much difference there are in a Z shoe compared to an X shoe in one of my previous videos here. Out of the two series of Yonex Barman shoes we're looking at today, only the Eclipsion has had a major update and you can see that it has had a major overhaul which is a big upgrade in my opinion. Those of you who found the previous generation of Eclipsion too clunky or heavy will be pleasantly surprised by this generation's Eclipsion. But as we're also looking at the super popular 65 series here, let's get comparing. In terms of design updates from the 65, there's actually none as Bamman & Shoes don't often go through an annual design refresh and this design version of the 65 was first seen before the Tokyo Olympics in the summer of 2021. So I believe the 65 will be due a design update sometime in 2024. My guess might be around the Olympics time frame again. We'll find out. However, no updates to the 65's design doesn't mean it's bad. The current 65's design and performance has been excellent. Just look at how many top players are wearing them and you can see why and how good they are. Yes, they've been updated with new colours from the black to the white and blue and I'm also aware that there's going to be a pure white 65Z coming out early 2024. That looked incredible. My current favourite is actually the C90 variant of the 65Z where Yonex says they've managed to use 90% recycled polyester to produce the shoe's upper surface area compared to only 70% on the usual 65Z. The C90 65Z Bamman shoe was seen for the first time during the 2023 Badminton World Championships and I liked it a lot. The cushioning and support was great, the fit was comfortable and it didn't feel clunky or heavy. Just a very familiar feeling of a 65 Series Z shoe. If anything, I thought the C90's shoe upper was just slightly softer than the usual 65, which I preferred it as it had a soft touch feeling which was super nice on the shoe's upper. Obviously, grip also wasn't an issue as I mentioned before that I really liked like the Laredo Blade sole designs and having moved to a new city about half a year ago and not having access to badminton halls with rubber mats consistently, that has made me aware and very appreciative of the grip that's coming from these shoes. Yonex's design and blend of materials in producing the outsoles is working well, so it gives me confidence when I'm jumping around and lunging, especially also since I've just come off an injury previously too. The 65Z shoe also retained its mesh design underneath the shoe to promote airflow and the insoles are also the same with its previous design. Design. I've seen Yonex shoes having three types of insoles designs in the flagship shoes and my personal favourite is the one seen with the Eclipsion here. But the 65's insoles are also thick and well padded. They do wear out quickly depending on how much you play. For me, it's mostly around my big toe area, so just simply replace them with another pair of insoles you like or go to Yonex's own power cushion plus insoles. The 65Z insoles are also breathable from the holes you can see on the bottom. In terms of shoe weight, I'm a UK 9.5 or 28cm in size and the C9 variant weighed in at just around 650 grams per pair and the blue colored version was just a touch more. My older pair with Solibad's laces on are just a bit over 680 grams in this instance. I would not consider the 65Z shoe to be a heavy pair of Bamman & Shoes at all but they're not ultra light so they sit nicely in terms of weight. My personal limit is around 750 grams per pair before I start to feel that the shoe is a bit clunky but to be honest once you're up and running around a Bamman & Court you don't really notice them after putting them on. Remember to protect your precious Bamman & Racket with the premium racket protection tape from ckyw.com forward slash shop. Save yourself a lot of heartache before they get chipped or scratched free delivery worldwide. If we now turn our attention to the Eclipsion Z and you can see the immediate difference in design from both generations here. Right off the bat, the booty design from the previous generation has been replaced and returned to a more traditional design where the ankle and heel support are separated from the tongue of the shoe. The dimples on the shoe upper was also replaced with materials and designs that were more similar to the 65Z with more fabric materials being present in the current generation Eclipsion Z. Compared to the 65, this Eclipsion Z also has a higher heel support 
favorite area, which I initially thought might catch the back of my heel, but once I put it on, it was super comfortable and nothing was catching during play. Super impressed so far. In terms of the outsole design, the current generation Eclipsion retained its very effective outsole design, where the outer edge of its outsole is a single piece of material going through the outside of our foot arch instead of two separate pieces of material at the top and bottom, like we see here in the 65Z. This is one of the unique features of the Eclipsion Z, where the shoe is super stable under movement, and I felt that like this generation of Eclipsion has retained that sense of confidence and stability that the previous generation had. Additionally, I also felt that the upgraded Eclipsion Z was also softer with thicker padding which resulted in a better fit around the foot which I believe coming from the added padding around the tongue of the shoe. In terms of weight, I'm also quite surprised that this generation's shoe was identical in terms of weight compared to the last one seeing as there's quite a lot of updates on the shoe, at least on the upper side. The Eclipsion Z also retained its ventilation design with an air vent just above the graphite sheet around the foot arch area. The insoles are also the same with little vents dotted around as it's mentioned before, this is my favourite insole from Yonex as it's the most grippy one. In terms of comfort and fit, I was very impressed with how much of an improvement it was compared to the previous generation. Not that the previous generation was bad at all, but this generation's fit and comfort was better. It felt more like a 65Z with thicker padding as well as the added stability, all for a little extra weight. In fact, speaking about weight, I had in my notes at the time that I thought this generation's Eclipsion felt lighter than the previous generation, until obviously I weighed them of course and they turned out to be the same. But the added comfort and fit was the key thing that stood out for me. In terms of durability, I believe your mileage might vary depending on what type of player you are. I'm not someone who tears through shoes, so I generally wear out my insoles first before the shoe itself is gone. As the build quality hasn't dropped compared to previous generation's shoes, I don't think it'll affect overall durability much. Obviously, Yonex also have other series of shoes which I've covered before on my channel, so check them out if you have any questions. In the meantime, what are your thoughts on the 65Z and the Eclipsion Z from Yonex? I'll see you in the next one.